Hello, everyone. Oh, I've just got to get comfy. How's everyone today? What day are we on? Wednesday? Wednesday. Yeah. It's been a bit busy day for me. I've actually, I ordered this TV unit, right, over a month ago. And it's one which you had to put together yourself. Right, my son said he would do it for me. And I said, no, I want to do this. I want to do it myself. Right, even if it takes me forever to do, I'm going to do it. So, anyway. I started putting, and I was just doing a little bit each day, right? You could, I could have, anyone else would have put this unit up in a day, in a day. No, not me, not me, not happening, right? Well, I finally got put, put it, well, I've just got one more door on the front to put on. But I'm not worried about that at the moment. I've got it up. And I've got my TV on it. So at the moment, I'm happy. I've got my new TV unit up and in place. So, I don't know when I'll put the other door. Probably, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe next week. <laughs> but the problem was, you got two long parts. You got a, the base, the part, the bottom part, and the top part. Now this company, and I might email them and tell them this. They might be best to put that top part, what this TV unit stands on, sits on, and the base of it, the bottom base, right? Make it one unit, one piece, not three separate pieces. Because I just think that it being three separate pieces, it weakens it. I've had to use wood glue on it and everything to make sure it stayed together. So, but I've done it. I've got it up. I've got two of the three doors on. So tell me the one door I've got to put on there. I was going to do that today and then I sat there, looked and I thought, nah. Now, I'll leave it for today. I'll do it any other time. So, how's you all been? What's everyone been up to? Oh. Right. We're going back to the beginning. This Sebastian. I want to forget all this, all that shit so that we've had the past week or so right i want to forget that i've got god first self last i'm doing well thank you i'm getting there right good to see you now right so because i think with everything that's gone on the main, the person we're here for, Sebastian, right, has been pushed aside because everyone's been focusing on the mum and the stepdad, and then we've had the United Cajun Navy, right, and. I have heard, I read this the other day as well, but I didn't say nothing last night. I read it yesterday. That FQ search are there. But they don't like to take, they don't like to make it public that they're there. Because they don't like to take credit for anything. They really don't. Right? They are, they run on donations. Right, so, but they don't ask for donations, if you know what I mean. Like, United 
encouraging neighbours actually ask for donations. If you so you don't. And I'll find their link out. So if anyone wants, and I'll put it in the description. So if anyone wants to make a donation to Exusurge, please do. And the owner, the guy who runs Exusurge, he started it all off. He started it because he had his own daughter go missing and died. If it wasn't for her, he wouldn't be doing this. Um, right um so let's have a look where do we start first let's go back to basics shall we go back to the timeline Right. Right, we could see it, okay. Ookie Cook. Before I go start, if you haven't already, if you haven't already. Oh, come on, that's it. Oh, there. If you haven't already, please hit the like. Subscribe if you want. It really helps me. I'd really be really happy. <laughs> right? But please give it a like and share. Because we need to keep this boy's name and picture out there. Because it saved itself on that one interview with News Nation, with the father, yesterday, like they posted yesterday. And I did show it on my live last night, that it hasn't had enough media attention. It's getting attention on YouTube, but not on TV. And that's a shame, because it should be. I don't know what you, like, in the US, do you have channels on your TV where it's just for specific things, like, for, like, we have channels like sports channels and documentaries and things like that. Do you have them? You have them, don't you? Could, even in the UK, they could do it, do one specific channel on the TV and just highlight or bring forward all the children and young young teens and adult dogs, people that have gone missing and put it on a TV channel and have it running all day long. That really hurts. Some people might watch it and they might think, oh, I'll just clip this one on for a minute. You know what I mean? That way it's going to get the attention of people. So, we won't give it over here in the UK. Tell you why. Because it won't bring any money in. Well, it would because I'd have adverts. I'd have adverts on here. And that's where they get the money to run these channels through the adverts. Anyway, as I said, we're going back to the beginning. Now this is the timeline. It tells you about Sebastian. It's the timeline. Okay? <coughs> Hold on. Right. <coughs> right, now I'm ready. It has been Four weeks since 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers disappeared from his home in Tennessee. 
was still no sign of the teenager. The autistic teenager was last seen by his mother and stepfather. Wow, that's wrong, because the stepfather wasn't there. When he went to bed on the night of 25th of February, but when his mother went to wake him up for school the next morning, he was gone, she said. Now, does anyone remember that first interview they gave? Right, I've got a clip. I can play it if you want. But he asked her, they asked her to go over what happened on the Sunday up until the Monday morning. And she goes, oh, we, we did some errands and all this, like, blah, blah. So he went, he went to bed at nine o'clock, said good night, I love you, good night to the puppy, and went to bed. I went to bed about 12 o'clock. Then she said, then I got up, woke him up, and he was gone. Got up, I got up, I went and woke him up, but he was gone. How can you wake someone up if they're not there? Now, I'm not into psychics or card, tarot card readings. I'm really not. There's only one psychic, and that I like, and that is Reverend Donna. I don't know if you've heard of her, any of you. Don't know. But that's the only psychic I will trust because she has worked with the police and all that lot. But this psychic, this card reader, she reads tarot cards. She said, she just, I found that strange, but it didn't click. You know when you hear something, but it just doesn't stay up there? It goes in one ear and out the other? Well, that was a bit like me. And because I thought, how can you go in and wake him up, but then he's gone? You can't wake someone up until God. Right? So she said the only explanation she can think of is she's gone in, she's gone to wake him up, but he wasn't, he wasn't, he was there, but he's, he wasn't there, do you know what I mean? He was gone. Right? So, had he died in his sleep? And I think he, she didn't have time to get rid of the body though. But then again, and there's no way Chris could have come back in the morning. There's no way. So, unless she put him in, in the car, but the police have been all over her car. I just thought it was strange. I clicked on, I did hear that. And it's like head scratching time. You're sitting there and you're scratching your head thinking, what the hell? What did she mean by that? Did she mean she went in to wake him up, but he was gone? And she just didn't, clearly say what she, the words she meant to say. I think that is a possibility that she said she went in to wake him up, but he was gone. No, she went in, she woke, she woke, she got up, went to wake, went and woke him up and then gone. I think she meant she woke up, she went in his room to wake him up, but he was gone. I don't think he was still there. I don't think he died during the night. And to be honest with you, the longer it takes to find this body, it's like the longer it harder it'll be to find out the truth. It really will be. So we need to find him. Hi there everyone from X. Please give me a heart, show some love, leave me a, a message. 
I do read them all. If, if they're there, I see them. I do read them. And from YouTube, please give me a like. It helps this video and it will really make me happy. Please give it a like. Anyway, carry on. Sebastian is believed to have wandered off in the middle of the night with a flashlight, barefoot and alone. Now, I think everyone's in agreement here. Because of what we know of what Seth has said and the mother about how he doesn't like, he, he had that incident with the, what they call, fire ants. I'm not sure if that's the same thing over here. We call them red ants. We have what they call red ants. And they bite. So perhaps it's the same thing. I don't know. Right, but apparently he stepped in some when he was little. Thinking it was a pile of mud. A pile of dirt. And it wasn't. And ever since then, he's never gone out of the house with some shoes and socks on or slippers on. Right? So I can't see him going out in the middle of the night with no shoes on, no coat, and just a little pocket torch sort of thing the sort that you have on your keychain. That didn't give off that much light. Just about gives off enough light, light so you can see where you put your keys in the door. This case sparked a major search in Sumner County that stretched thousands of miles and lasted more than a week before officials said they were scaling back the ground search to focus more on the investigative side. Personally, I don't think they should have scaled. Yes, scale it back, but keep some searches there and going further out. You know what I mean? They should have scaled it back completely. They said they didn't, but I don't know. Right? Right, the case sparked a major right, grand search to focus more on the investigative side. Below is a full timeline of what has happened in the case today. Monday, 26th of February, endangered child alert issued. The endangered child alert was issued at approximately 11.17am by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, TBI, on behalf of the Sumner, Sumner County Sheriff's Office. In the alert, investigators said Sebastian was last seen earlier that day near Gafford Court in Hendersonville. I think that he's wearing a black sweatshirt, black sweatpants and glasses. Look at him. So happy there. So happy. Right, Sumner County Emergency Management Agency, EMA, Director Ken Widener said over 200 people had been dispatched to search for the missing teenager, including multiple K-19, mounted units, helicopter crews and drones. The search team covered nearly five, a nearly, and nearly, and nearly, covered a nearly Five mile radius. I can't recall off the top of my head when the last search was likely. Not this way. Chief Deputy Eric Craggett with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office told News 2 Obviously, this is one exponentially more important being a child who does have autism. Tuesday, the 27th of February, Amber Alert goes out. We can then change it from an endangered to an amber. On February the 27th, the TBI announced that the endangered child alert had been elevated to an amber alert. 
based on additional information, investigative information deli delivered. Oh, God, I get these words out. Developed during research. An Amber Alert is issued when there is reasonable belief by law enforcement that an abduction has occurred and a child is in imminent danger of seriously bodily injury or death, according to the DOJ. Right? Mean, meanwhile, dozens of agencies continued to search for Sebastian and began employing unique tactics such as blasting his favourite son, Ida Tiger, or searching in different areas to try to call out to him, the Sumner County Sheriff's Office said. At a press conference later that day, authorities urged local residents to check their surveillance cameras and report any possible information that could help lead to Sebastian. Thursday, 29th February, Pond drained not expand. Now that pond was a water retention pond on the uh, construction site. It was only knee high, but it's high enough for someone to drown me. Well, but it's knee high and um, you, they walk through it, and that, but they, they drown it. As the search entered its fourth day, officials revealed they had received several tips and meet calls for people to check their surveillance cameras, but none were confirmed sightings of Sebastian. Hmm. Right now, don't forget what I've just said. Calls for people to check their surveillance cameras, but none were confirmed sightings of Sebastian. Remember that? Emergency Management and Agency Director Ken Widener added that search and rescue dogs had not been able to pick up a scent. Remember that? Investigators also drank a pond to the east of Sebastian's home and found nothing. Rewards issued for information. Right? It's a 3,500 reward has been put up, nothing else. Uh, an anonymous group of business owners in the Nashville area have pledged a minimum cash reward. So it's, it's business owners that have, has put this reward up. Right. Monday the 4th of March, search scaled back and parents speak out. Yeah, we all saw that interview. After a week of searching, authorities announced they were scaling back the ground search for Sebastian and transitioning him to an investigation. This does not diminish our commitment to finding Sebastian, Mr. Craggett said during a press conference. This is simply us transitioning from the ground search to the investigative side. Fine. He added that there's no leads, no details to indicate that Sebastian is not alive. On the same day, Sebastian's mother spoke to the media for the first time about their child's disappearance telling WSM people, I just want my baby to be okay. Hmm. I wouldn't wish this on anyone, she added. Sebastian's step stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, said the family had been on one con constant roller coaster ride of hopelessness and, helplessness and hopelessness since Sebastian finished. The couple has received backlash from not speaking out earlier, to which they say they shouldn't be judged because no one knows what they're going through. Fair enough. You don't know, and I don't wish you to ever know, they said. Just be kind to people, it's just that simple. Thursday the 7th of March, Langfield and Kentucky search. 
Investigators announced that the search had moved to the landfill in White Plains, Kentucky, where trash was taken from Sebastian's neighborhood in the beach area. Um, no. Oh, hold on. Someone's just messaged me. Right. Oh, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? Oh, March the 4th is Tennessee's Missing Children's Day. This day was named in honor of Bethany Markowski, who went missing on this day in. Today we have all the witnesses. Right? These are just a few of the names that we have. Right? Summer Wells, Tabitha Tudors, Marlena Child Childress, Baby Joe Clyde, Jennifer and Adria, Adriana Wicks, Leanne Green, Bethany Markowski. Those are just a few of the names of the children that are missing. Anyone? Let's get back to what I was doing. Right, this landfill, oh, God, you know. This landfill is not where they take the everyday general household waste. This landfill is where, you know, on the construction site, you have those big skips, right? That is where those skips are took to and emptied. Right? So that's why they need to get to Gallatin landfill because that is where, well, it's too late now. I, I don't know. They probably could find something. I don't know. Four weeks later, possible. You know what I mean? They need to go and search that ever landfill in Gallatin. Right. Official called the search of the landfill. Oh. Official called the search of the landfill. A precautionary measure to eliminate possible options and questions and said there was no specific information indicating evidence related to the search for Sebastian there. Well, I'm not from the US. I'm from the UK. Oh, God. Okay, okay, give me a chance. <laughs> I'm done, everyone. Right, yeah. I'll do a live, another live about this, Jackie, if you're listening. I'll do a live about all these because nineteen years she's been missing. Oh my God. Um, um, um. Oh. As the search, uh, where was I? Do I get to? Uh, yeah. The search concluded that e evening with the authorities later stating it did not provide any additional clues as to what happened to Sebastian. While he had hoped for a different outcome, our committee meant to find his Sebastian remains unwavering. Right? We will continue to explore all available avenues and resources to bring closer to this case answers to family. Right? Oh God, I just wrote that. Okay, I will do. I'll do some on all these. I was going to do one on some of Wells, but then this case took another turn, and 
Right? But I will, because it's only fair that all these children, all these people get immense, get t brought to the lodge, you know what I mean? Because something is seriously wrong in Tennessee with all these children not being found. Right. Stepfather reveals fear for Sebastian. In an, in an interview with WTVF, Sebastian Fox revealed revealed his fears for his young stepson, saying that he's not oh. In an interview with WTVF, Sebastian's father, Seth Rogers, revealed his fears for his stepson. Uh, for his son. Christ's sake. Saying that he's not one to wander up. And due to an experience as a young boy, will never go far without shoes on. He decided he wanted to step into a man of what he thought was dirt, it was fire and, and since then he doesn't like to get his feet in the dirt. He likes to have his shoes and socks on, he said of Sebastian's children experience. In order for him to do something that out of the norm, something would have had to have happened that it felt like he just couldn't deal with it anymore, he added. During the interview, it also revealed that a search dog had tried Sebastian's sent to a construction site, but it turned out to be a false alarm. Right? Now, this is where there's a big question mark, big, big question mark. Right? Who told him about that dog? Right? Because how can he be a false positive if he's going on the scent of his son? Right? How can that be a false positive if he tracks something somewhere? But then the police are saying no dogs picked up a scent. None of the dogs picked up a scent. And that's why people are saying, well, if none of the dogs picked up his scent, there's no way. He walked out of that house. So this is very confusing. So I'd like to find out who told Seth about that dog. Was it police? Or what? Because police are telling everyone else there's no sense. No dogs picked up on anything. Right? And one, one dog tracked him to a construction site area, area over there and it just disappeared. And it's confusing. There are missing pieces to the puzzle and I'm having difficulty solving this, he said. Mr. Rogers added that it makes absolutely no sense there's been no trace of him. I'm hoping he's still alive, the father said. That is my main hope right now. Then Thursday 14th. Video shows activity outside family home. Yeah. Right? Home security video obtained by YTVF showed two specks of light outside the family's home in the Henderson film, neighbored around 3 10 a.m. in the middle of the night. When, round about the time between the time that teenager went missing between 12 and 6. Some Mayor County Sheriff's Deputy Eric Craddock told the news outlet that there are several clips of that have cut in me. Ah! Oh, several clips that have come in that investigators are reviewing for more clues. One clip shows a pitch black Stafford Court neighborhood with two lights that appear to be people with flash flashlights moving towards each other before, before moving off the screen. Saturday the 23rd, new resources during the search. Yeah, the United Cajun Navy announces a briefing in Nashville that they are going, that they are joining the search effort. 
I'm glad I don't live in the US because if I did and I went missing, please don't get them to help. I'm like uh, Jolly Vision, he said it. So don't get Cajun, United Cajun Navy to help because they're scam artists. Sebastian's parents answered questions about the search room with his mother saying she had cried on and off for a month. Katie Crowther and her husband, Sebastian's stepfather, Chris Crowther, appeared on crime stories with Nancy Grace, in which the host grilled them on their whereabouts and all the team vanished. Well, I'm sorry, but she did and she didn't. Right? Like, Katie's dad come out now and she keeps adding to her story. Right? Now, on the, on the Sunday, they went and picked up the niece and they went to BJ's or whatever and then they went, then they come home, no, then they went bowling, then they come home, dropped the groceries off that they picked up, then they went out for the evening meal, right? Then came out that she picked the niece up and there was two, two Sebastian's aunts there, that would be either her sisters or CP's sisters, right? Either way. So there she added to that. So, but they did, she did not ask Chris what he did on the Sunday. He was down in Memphis. He wasn't working that day. Because they don't work weekends. So what did he do on a Sunday? Did he go to the shops? Did he go, I don't know, for a walk somewhere? I don't know. Because no one's asked Chris what he did on that Sunday. Right? Miss Proudfoot said she was convinced someone must have her son. As, as there had been no trace of him so far. Not just the fact that there's no trace of him, sweetheart. There's no scent of him leaving the house. No scent from around the house. Meanwhile, Seth Rogers, Sebastian's dad, appeared on News Nation saying he had not given up hope on finding his son. He also spoke of communication issues between himself and the Proudfoot. Yet apparently, for the last two weeks now, they haven't spoke to him. Because they're not happy, that either weren't happy that these Seth's sister started to go fund me to help Seth pay like all these all these utility bills and everything bills that you have to pay for each month because while he's out of work not working because he's looking for his son he obviously wasn't getting the full pay at least he might be getting a little bit but not full pay and it was money to keep him so he didn't have to worry about bills that money would be there, right? To pay his rent or mortgage, the gas, the electric, everything. Right? Well, the Proud Books wasn't happy about that. And they they issued a, a threat towards his sister. Take it down. Otherwise, if any harm comes to, if this harms the investigation, into finding Sebastian, they will get uh, lawyers onto her or whatever. Well, as soon as I heard that, I started posting the GoFundMe page. Uh, most of my lives, and definitely every time in the description. Right? And then we found out the other day that apparently Seth, uh, CP, Chris Proudfoot, has issued a warning to 
obsessed about searching his son because it's making him look bad. Well, that's your own fault. You'd made yourself look bad, no one else, you. Right, so they're not talking. Um, all right. So that's that, right? Hi, Truth Deep Seeker. Good to see you again. Oh, wow. Eight to five. From uh, X. Where's all my YouTubers in here? Come and say hello. I know there's some hiding in the bushes. Right? Anyway, so that's it so far in a nutshell. Right? But what's getting everyone back up is the fact that he's coming out with these, issuing these threats of getting a an attorney involved or something like that if they don't stop searching well i'm sorry no one would tell me not to stop searching for my son no one right no one come on anyway so we've got that and then i came across some stuff again And it was on Facebook pages. Right. And there's one, and I can't find it now. So I'll be, that's why. Well, it said. That apparently, up on the construction site, up the top end, where that road leads into the construction site, off that ever, right? She noticed, or he noticed, like these poles of wood, right? I don't know if it's wood or what, but they pile it up quite high and quite deep, and it can go like, 15 feet back, if not deeper. And sometimes it's winding up for um, someone to climb in. And she said, that needs to be searched because perhaps he's thinking he could climb in there. He loves my... Perhaps he thought, by climbing in there, he'll keep warm, right? And perhaps if he moved, he could have got trapped in there because she said she's also noticed some what they call vultures or whatever flying around there. It needs to be checked. So she put this message on this Facebook page and someone said he's, um, they've sent it to the sister, Steph's sister who will get get it to Seth because it needs to, to be checked apparently it was they did look around it when the first went looking but they didn't search it it needs to be searched it needs to have the proper people come in and move it out of place each pile out of place you know what I mean I don't know if it's logs long logs or what but it like goes 15, 20 feet back and can go four, four to five feet, five layers high. She said she's known animals go in there to take shelter and then get trapped. So a child could get in there, a small child, or a slim child could get in there, she said. So, 
there's that I seen today. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. I'm sure it's on this one I see. Well, so many people post on this each day. It's, it's hard to keep up with it all. So, I can't find it. So, I'll go back to my, perhaps I did share it, I don't know. But anyway, I want to go to Nick Berries. 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 Nick Berries. <laughs> because he could just get some good information as well. Where was that? I seen it. I seen it on his Facebook. This is so annoying because I know I seen it on his Facebook because I thought, oh, it'd be on YouTube. But let's see if it's on X. Might be on there. Please. Right now, this is Nick Berry, and he's with inside Sumner County EMS OPS Center. Right, and this is really interesting to watch. Is that just a pitting up again? Are you joking me? Where's the video gone? That's just a flipping picture. Okay, I'll share this. Because for some reason, I can't find the video. There's a video of this. And now I can't find it. I know, Kathy. I've always said uh, to look when children go missing. Like we seriously believe some some of was being trafficked by her parents, and I believe she was being trafficked out, and something went wrong. Anyway, thank you for being here, Kathy. This is what? Oh God, what's this now? This is at the place, the ops, where all. This is the screen where on it it tells, shows you all the places they've searched, where they've gone door to door, the caves that people keep going on, the caves they've looked in, um, when they've had someone phoning about having found something. They mark it all up on this screen because you can have several layers over it. So if they want, they can take 
certain layers off if they only want to look for a certain thing. But that is what they work with every day. And I'm a bit annoyed because the video isn't here no more. Right? So. Because I think I thought, oh, I'll show that today. Not even on his YouTube page. No, that's pretty tight, isn't it? There is nothing. So where's that gone? I wonder if they took it down because I know I've seen it. I was watching it myself. Because it was even on their news channel. And it's not showing anything on their channel here now. Look, it's not showing anything. It just shows the last one was where this one. Two weeks ago. You know what I mean? And I know I've seen it somewhere. Oh, here it is. I want is this it? I hope it is. Yes, finally found it. Come oh, on, man. Right, we'll just wait for it to load up. You know, today I had people knocking on my door wanting me to sign up for them for their internet. I told them politely to pee off. <laughs> oh, but we can do better than BT. I said, you're promising me. And they said, like, hunting some of whatever, megabytes, whatever it is, or gigabytes, whatever. Yeah. Where I'm only getting 40 some with BT. Well, yeah, you get a better service with us. No, I won't. In 35 and 45, depending on how time of day. No water in Longsville, Riley. But that, that doesn't mean nothing. Someone said. Sometimes you're right, that can close up and it stops the water going into the lungs. We begin tonight with an exclusive look inside the ongoing search for Sebastian Rogers. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Carrie Sharp. The 15 year old disappeared one month ago from his Hendersonville home. And since then, there have been few updates from authorities. <laughs> case is certainly frustrating and we know it's impacted the entire community which is why we're committed to sharing the very latest with you including what's still being done now
now to find Sebastian. Our Nick Barris was granted full access to the Sumner County Emergency Operations Center to find out and to take us inside in this exclusive report. It was that Sebastian disappeared from his hand. This is the been in inside the Sumner County emergency on this map to help find the teen. Well, this is the system that we use to track all of our searchers. Ken Widener is director of Sumner County EMA, and from the beginning, he has spearheaded the official search for Sebastian. The investigation is still active. Not during the first eight days after the teen disappeared. No trace of him. The professional search effort has since been scaled back, though Widener appreciates volunteers who continue to look follow their own leads. I'm not going to psychics and things, but we've got to vet what we do before we do it. Widener says they follow up credible leads from law enforcement. And any time the sheriff's office indicates or TBI indicates where you've got an area of interest that we need to search, we go. We're ready to go. And th this sophisticated mapping system, they've been every bone found, and they go. Fresh bones. We'll check that out. It was their bones. Some spelunkers have been deployed to area puns and sinkholes. The white doctor coved, and they've all been searched. Also, the every storm drain within the half start. mile of Sebastian's home. And some have wondered about the home itself. The house was searched at least 10 times. Dogs? Dogs, yep. Widener says bloodhounds and cadaver dogs are used, but contrary to some reports... None of them, my understanding, um, were actually on a, on, on a trail that was following Sebastian. To date, it's as okay. though the boy simply disappeared. Have you found evidence of Sebastian yourself when you've been out there? No. As busy as this map is, I'm told there's still areas to be checked to look for Sebastian. No one is giving up. In Sumner County, Nick Barris, News Channel 5. It is such a mystery. To date, Sumner County EMA has deployed more than 1,400 trained search personnel to look for Sebastian. They right now. Oh God. Uh, I know, Angie. It's going up. Anyway, so as you can see, that board covers everything they do. It's got different layers. So as I said, if they only want to look at somewhere, say, reports of uh, bones being coming, they can clear all the other screens off it and just have that one screen up. Or look, uh, maybe have the screen up to show them where the caves are, what caves have yet to be looked into. You know what I mean? So they can do all that from that centre which I think is really good. And it's given me a bit of hope that they haven't gave up on Sebastian. And as I said, FQ search is there, but they won't. They don't like to publish stories that they're there. They don't like to take credit for anything. They like to come in, just work with the law enforcement, work out a plan, what areas need to be searched, what equipment they need, do you know what I mean? And they get on with it. You don't have them like the United Cajun United, oh, well, we've got bad weather, weather so we're not going out today. Duh. That's what you're for. But yet, yeah, MJ, if the... Now, there's something in this world that if it closes up, it can close up, right? And it can stop, and you, it call, it's what they call dry drowning. You're drowning, but water isn't getting down into your lungs. Because I was watching something about that the other day. I watch a lot of things. <laughs> something scary.
there's some things don't. So yeah, that doesn't mean you'll think about not having no water in the lungs. I think it was accident, but then again, I don't know if bank campers aren't found on the side. Right? Perhaps it was in his pocket, and as he's fell in the water, he's washed it out the pocket, you know what I mean? And washed up onto the side. I don't think there's any foul play in this, really don't. Anyway, but getting back onto Sebastian. So they are still looking, they are still searching. So I'm not believing, I'm not listening to anything now from United Cajun Navy because they're not doing nothing. I feel sorry for the father because he's been duped. He's been duped by these people. And um, he's the one who asked him to come and help. And he said they answered his call. We was all happy that they came to help. But then it was like after that first day on the Saturday, when those bones, as someone said, if, it, if it's bones, it's not going to be Sebastian. Right? If it's Bones, they find it's not going to be Sebastian. But it'd be interesting to know, it would be nice for them to go and search that area just to make sure and find if there is bones and it belongs to and it is human, then who does it belong to? He's got a family out. That person, that body they find or find, there's a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, an aunt, an uncle grandparents out there sorry for the side tracking that's okay mg i'm glad you told me look at your collapsing what yeah but they are they're looking into the toxicology report they wait for that to come back because I think it is either the same night or a night after, either after or, be, or before Sebastian, um, before Riley. Someone else was uh, had uh, some added to their drink and he was robbed of his wallet, his money, everything. So they're waiting for the toxicology to come back now. So we'll see up when that comes back what, what the results are. Anyway, so what was I saying now? So I will not believe anything Cajun United Cajun Navy. Not Cajun Navy. Because what got me was, yeah. Exactly, he could have took some himself before going out. You know what I mean? I know myself when I was talking about riding out at the moment. Sorry, just sidetracking. I know when I've gone out for a night out. We always start off with um, a few... Um, oh, God, what are they called? Shots. Right? I normally, I like uh, the shots. I can drink shots, a shot of anything all night long. A vodka shot, whatever. Oh, some of these uh, apple side, apple shots and strawberry shots, speck and lethal. But I can, I can go on them all night and still walk home. But there's one drink I can't take. Well, I can, but it knocks me flat out. And that is a vodka, and it's a Russian vodka. I can't think of the name of it. And I remember once I went to a friend's first, 
and we was having drinks at hers. And I was literally knocking this vodka back because that was like me, God water. Vodka to me, we were soda, uh, like tonic water, it was like water or coke. It was like, like drinking water. So I left hers. I got into a taxi. I got back up to the place where I was meeting my daughter and my son. You know, my daughter, sorry. I literally fell out of the, ca the cab. Right? I got into the bar and I sat on the stool. And I had to get help. I had to have someone in front of me to walk me to the bathroom. Because it was so full. So busy in this pub. I ordered one round of drinks when I got there. I didn't even have one myself. I then went to the bathroom, sat in there just with my head in my hand, and then said, can you phone me a taxi? I need to go home. I got up. I walked out that bathroom, straight out of that pub, paid for that round of drinks, and got a taxi and went home. So I cannot drink that one vodka to Russian vodka and I can't drink it. My heart breaks. Oh, sorry. Sorry. My heart breaks for Sebastian, my heart breaks. Yes. It's a shit show. We need to focus on him being found. And... It, the UCN need to pack their cars up, whatever, and feckin' leave. You know that information you sent me the other day, MG? Right? How it said he done it. How do you know she didn't do it? And she took, she's done the damage to it, then the bruising on his neck. Right? She took the photos of it then. Trying to blame Seth. Because she accused him of domestic violence as well in the divorce. Seth loves that, that lad. 110% he loves him. And this is killing him. This is literally breaking him down now. And you need all the support you can get. So, anyway, so, and then, why else did I see on um, one of these things? Is it on Facebook? Uh, let's have a look. I can't find it now. Um, uh, I've been finding a lot of information out on face on Facebook and uh, groups. Right, it's similar as well. It's like they said, "Oh yes, where was it now?" They said that if he jumped out, if he climbed out of his bedroom window, right. He'd land onto some bushes and mulch. Right? Now, this isn't a very good one, but we'll see if there's any of us anywhere. Look at her face there. Eh? Look at this. Is that a mother, a uh, look of a mother who's just can't do no more? I've seen that look before in other women of other mothers who've injured their children. And he, he wasn't happy because he couldn't get his own way that day. No, 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 no. Oh, God, what's all that about? I don't know. Uh, I know there's more pictures somewhere of the house.
Oh yeah, I heard something today. Right? The reason behind Sebastian going to live with his dad. Right? Was because it was it because of Sebastian's needs, it was causing problems with Katie and CP marriage. And someone was saying, is it possible that that is the reason he was staying down in Memphis and wasn't coming back home? Perhaps their marriage was on the rocks. And perhaps that night when he made, when they had that three hour phone call, perhaps that was him telling him, look, we're over, we're done, we're finished. And she lashed out at Sebastian. Do you know what I mean? But I heard it was because of their marriage, because of the problems it was causing in their marriage. Is the reason he was going to live with his dad. So, uh, yeah, they're going on about those marks on his arm. Yeah, those marks were like eight days after Sebastian went missing. I'm sure if those bite marks, right, eight, the police would have seen them and would have took photographs of them all. And B, after eight days, those marks would have healed over, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, it is, Mississippi, not Tennessee. Uh, I said the other day, GMA pleaded with KP to tell the truth for once in their life. Yeah, she, she, either she's done something out of anger, right, and he's, now, and he's covering up the body for her, but why would he do that if the marriage was over? You know what I mean? I don't understand that he wouldn't, someone wouldn't do that. If she was a man and you was, you just told your wife on the phone, I'm sorry, we're over, we're finished, I'm not coming back. Boom. And then she could see something's happened and she's called an injury to Sebastian. Would you cover up for her? I know if I was a man, I'd go, no way am I covering this up for you, hon. No way. The marriage is over. I'm finished. I'm not covering for you. I don't understand why he would cover for her. Right. No, someone here is just put on this. Please go and join this site it's for sebastian it's mysterious disappearance of sebastian rogers henderson ta right and they've got some superb mod, ad, uh, admin and mods running this site they're all youtube some of them are youtubers themselves running this site right uh one is uh trev from Trev Time, pardon me, I've got trapped in again. Trev Time, 
and then we got um J L J R R. But it says here, when we first heard from KP, she did not mention the alleged thug she heard from Sebastian's room. She revealed that during a later interview, as I said, I said after that first interview, you watch. Next time they come out, they'll talk. They'll say his name more. Why? They did another interview. Where did they do the second? Uh, I think it was on a live. Why? And the bro, they're talking. Oh, Sebastian loved to do this. Sebastian is Sebastian. That I want. Oh my God! They're recognising him now. They're actually saying his name. So then I said, you watch. Next time they're doing an interview, they'll add something else to the interview. And what did they come out with? Oh, they went and met, picked the niece up and they went here. They went there. They did this. They did that. I thought, I swear to God, I can't take this no more. So I said, you watch. She's still going to add to her story. And then she does that one interview with uh, that other YouTuber where she says she heard the thud and she calls out. Are you Did you fall out of the bed? And he goes, did you fall out of the bed? Are you okay? Or something like that. And he goes, no, no. And yes, ma'am, I'm okay. Or something like that. So she's letting people know that she spoke to him at 10 p.m. I thought, I'll give up. I'll give up. Because she is doing exactly what John and Candace Wells did. Every time anyone mentioned anything about what they didn't do or what they should have said, they then add that into their own story. And it's so fucking annoying as i've said if you're telling the truth you won't need to add on you don't right you don't add on if you're telling the truth so theory sebastian was injured by someone in his room resulting in his passing sebastian was removed from the home between midnight 6 and 6 a.m. KP and CP had an initial plan, maybe derived during the three hour call, to make it seem like he was taken or walked off on his own. Perhaps even staging the backyard flashlights to corroborate the plan. Continuing the plan, KP would say she noticed him missing at 6 a.m. when she would normally wake him up for school. At this point in their plan, there was no need for a thug to be heard by KP. They simply hoped he would not be found. As part of this plan to delay the initial interview for as long as possible. I'm sorry, that's my cat. I'm just about to go and kick it up the backside. As part of this plan to delay the initial interview for as long as possible. After the interview happened, Sebastian's disappearance grows attention and searches. Attention and searches they were, not, they were hoping to avoid. Worries that Sebastian may be found. CP and C KP and CP alter the plan to include KP hearing a thug to, to explain anything that may be found during an autopsy. True. Trying to make it look like that injury was unrelated to in his disappearance right now i know i've seen some on this what was it where was it now come on we i would not have imagine how far this gotten we i would not have 
imagine how far this has gotten. We, I would not have. Right? I would not have imagined how far this would have got. When I heard that, when I heard that, um, right, when I heard him say that, I sat here and I'm scratching my head thinking, what? I wouldn't even be thinking like that if it was my son or my child gone missing. I wouldn't be thinking, oh my God, he's got so much attention. It's, it's everyone's talking about, it. oh my God. No. What did you expect? Is a 15 year old autistic lad that has gone out of his comfort zone. Out of his, um, what, what can I say? Um, they're like, they're like a plan, like everything had to be in order, they had like a plan, right? So he's took himself out of order, he's got no shoes on, no coat on, just a little torch that wouldn't it don't give up a lot of light. I know I've had them torches before. And I still struggle to see my key going in the door. And no, I wasn't drunk at the time. I just couldn't see my key going in the door. Right? So, I know those little light torches don't give off a light. That much light. So what did you expect? For them to report their... their uh, for her to report her son missing? And for no one to say anything. Right, let's go back again. Let's do it again. We, I would not have imagined how far this has gotten. We, I would not have imagined how far this has gotten. We, I would not have. I Oh. I've sent him an invite on Facebook. He hasn't accepted it. I've sent one to Katie as well. She hasn't accepted it. We, I I'll would not have. Um. Uh, there has been some other people around YouTube that maybe you guys are aware, I'm not aware of, that have been going by the um, home, the prophets. Now I've saved that picture. You just look at it, look how happy he is there. Right? He looks really, uh, you can't get that close in, but on the one I've got, I can zoom really close up. Now, is that the mum? I think that's the, um, his aunt. That's Chris's sister, I think. Hold on. When did uh, Sebastian go missing? Was it the 25th of February, 26th? This was, was this photo taken on the 27th or was it uploaded on the 27th? Because I am, right, hold on, I'll see if I can zoom in. I'm never sure if that means the date it was taken Right? Or the date it was uploaded. Yeah, I was thinking that. I'm thinking if she did do all that, it was probably over stimulated. Right? Because he's had so much going on that day. He's been to 
BJ's and all that lot. He's met up with his cousin and two ones. That's a lot for a child with autism, believe it or not. He's happy probably because there's another child there. Right? He's gone to BJ's. They've got some groceries in. They went bowling. Now that is very loud. Right? Now I will tell you now. Autistic children. When they're out. And they've got all the different sounds. Going on around them. All the different smells. It's sensory overload. I know that. Right? So he's gone to these two places so far with all these people about and all these different noises and sounds and smells. Right? And then apparently they came home, dropped the groceries off because it was just some snacky foods and then went out for dinner. Again, was they all together? I understand those all together. The aunt and the niece was all having dinner together. From what I understand, I'm not sure. Right? But again, there's all them different sounds going on. Different smells. It's sensory overload. Yes, it's 15. But they still have trouble with the sensory. It's too much for them. They can't. Take it all in. Right? Okay, he's messaging me now. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see what you got here, MG. Oh! Ho, ho. Okay. Look at this, everyone. The YouTuber. Can I get that? Can't get that zoomed in anymore. I can't get zoomed in anymore. Can I? If I if I downloaded it onto my computer, I could, but I'm not downloading it. Take ages. I'll read it. It says, "The YouTuber in Sebastian's neighbourhood." Our neighbourhood is tired of you walking up and down our roads, flying your drone, constant live streaming our homes, and then sparking, speaking horribly about us when we ask you to be respectful to the people that live here. You laugh and cackle like a crazy person. It would be more helpful if you would do your searching with the search crews. Sebastian is not in his neighbourhood. Maybe offer your services to the Cajun Navy. Because <laughs> we are beginning to think you are a stalker and not really searching for Sebastian. Maybe just try maybe just trying to get likes, subscribers and cash app money. Use your skills appropriately appropriately sincerely. Right? Is that the JRL investigates you? No, he was tame. Compared to this guy, I won't say his name, but a quick search. I know who she's on about. I bet you I know who she's on about. No, I can't see him being disrespectful. But I heard he was out there the other day with his drone. JLR, he just went up the road, come back down, went up one road, come back down. Then when I went up that um, housing estate thing and then went on to the construction site, just drove around, didn't stop, then come back out, went up to the fire station, right, turned around, and that, that was it. He didn't do no more. Right? Kathy Barristock. I'm so sorry that you are all being subjected to this kind of behaviour. Just remember, 
you own your property and the air rods above it. <laughs> Is that woman for real? Is she for real? So if anything is there that you want removed, then do so. Unless aircraft of any kind is licensed and registered with the FAA, it is trespassing. I completely understand First Amendment rights. But at no time should someone else be more important than yours. I'm so, oh my God, oh God. Is that woman for real? Really, that airspace above your house as well as yours? No, it's not. You don't pay for the airspace, you pay for the land, not the airspace. I understand it, it would be disrespectful if they're coming down low and zooming into and looking into your home. There's no need for that. But if he's flying above the houses and he's not looking into the houses, then I don't see how they can say it, do anything. I know, I've got an idea who it is. Because there's several YouTubers down there. But there's one I heard that had his drone out the other day. I think it was yesterday. Was it yesterday? I think he had his drone out the other day. Because you no know, cinematic, they was driving around so they could show him where that uh, what's the name that recess pool was, where that water retention pond was, and that was, I believe, yesterday. Possibly yesterday, and I said yes. We're just showing such and such where the retention pond is. He's over there with his drone. I know what I'm wrong about. JLR didn't do anything. He, in fact, he's the one who got followed. Right? And when he got out to come ask him like, about Sebastian, because what happened is he was coming down their road, coming past their house to come out of that road and as he's come past their house he noticed a car pull up right so I thought that's weird the house is no one's at home so why's and who's going to the house is it his parents right maybe checking on the house we don't know so he carries on driving they pull out and follow him right and then he stops, he obviously stops at a junction or something like that. And this guy gets out of his car and starts filming him, uh, taking photos of his car and all this lot. So JLR got out of his car to ask him some questions about Sebastian, if he knew what was going on, right? And this guy was very, very hostile towards him. So JLR reported him to the law enforcement. They didn't seem too bothered, but TBI was very interested. So isn't JLR? I know what I want about. Naughty, naughty. But come on, the airspace. Do you lot all who all own drones? You can't fly it over houses. It's their airspace. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God, I can't believe I'm going to have to post that up on my Facebook page later. I'll have to post that on my Facebook page. That is fucking hilarious. Anyway, so we're on this. Facebook page, please go and join. It is it's all about uh, why? Stop. Is that picture? 
right? I'll see if I can click on that and see me. Right? No, 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 no. John T, go on, no. Sweet T. No. I know I follow you, but no. So, I'm not watching it. Well, I can't zoom in at the moment. But can you see these little bushes? Now, these lights, these windows here, got to be the, into the garage because just around that side are the garage doors. So that's not his bedroom. They said his bedroom's on the front, so this has got to be his bedroom. Because that would be, like, maybe the lounge, dining area, I don't know. Could be the dining area. Because I think the lounge is on the back of the house. It don't make sense because she said the living room, her couch in the living room, close to Sebastian's room. Now, Sebastian's on the front here, and the, la the lounge is on the back end of the house by the kitchen. Right? How is she going to hear Sebastian if he fell out of bed? Because, you know, the, uh, where's that picture I see? Where was it? On here. Oh, Look, see, you got like the kitchen area here and the dining area there, right? But there's another picture. So again, this is the dining area where they're sitting, and the kitchen. Fishing area is there. So this is so annoying. I know I've seen pictures of the living room. Oh god, let me see. Oh it may be on that Facebook page. Sorry. I'm looking for this picture. No, I'm really going to have to post that on my Facebook page. That is fucking hilarious. Uh, oh, here it is. Here it is. See this? This is that what they call the sunroom, where they keep the cat the cage for the dogs to sleep in. Now, apparently, this door makes a lot of noise when it opens. Right. The photograph was taken from the side door, the door on the side of that room. As you can see, you got doors here. But from what I understand, they don't use those doors because they've got a sofa in front of them doors. So to get into here, they come round through this door where the photo was taken from. And the dogs are around here somewhere. Be over here, where that. Right? Now, if she's on her sofa, which is at the back of the house, as you can see, it's at the back of the house. There's their garden fence. Right? This is their lounge. Sebastian is at the front of the house. So how would she hear if he fell out of bed? Because I know from that room, goes into the kitchen and from the kitchen goes to her room and then to Sebastian's room at the front of the house. So how would she hear him falling out of the bed like a thud? If he's at the front of the house, to the side as well, 
to the side of the house at the front and she's here. She's on the sofa here. So I don't understand that. How did she hear? If she's at the back end of the house, he's at the front of the house. He's closest to the front door. I don't know if there's a door. As she come in the front door, I don't know if there's an opening, like a doorway towards the bedroom from there, or if you have to come through the dining room into the lit lounge and into the kitchen. I'd say there's another door or from the doorway that leads into the kitchen. I think there is. But there's a doorway of the kitchen that leads to their bedroom and to the other two bedrooms. Because to get from her bedroom, you have to walk past the kitchen door, kitchen opening, to get to Sebastian's room. That's why people say, okay, what are you sending me now? Oh my God. I think I read that. Was that on his uh, TikTok, um, X or Facebook? I think I've just seen that. Right. Yeah, now. The real mini art no really are looking into that case again. You see more than fifteen official cars and trucks with equipment parked on some property in Springfield. This is near where Wicks lived. Neighbours believe this search is Search to be linked to the Wicks case, though authorities have not yet officially confirmed the search warrant is in connection with the case. Now, this was how long ago now? 2004. And that was a mother and her daughter went missing. Yep, that is something. Yeah. Thank you. But I did see that. Anyway. Where are we? Back to the house again. Oh, uh, God. It was on that. Well, it was on this Facebook page. Right, so that's the back of the house, yeah? Wet, oh, before we go, that's the front of the house. See over here? That must be his bedroom. Right? And here would be, I don't know, the dining room maybe, because the other picture where it shows the full house, the two windows at the front on the end of the house, look into the garage because if you go round the side of the house, you've got the garage. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to show you. I'm going to go on Google Maps because I can show you better. I can show you better if I go on Google Maps.
Rồi, thay subscribe đây nhà gặp kinh kinh. Đó. Let's click on the command. Right. Let's try to just drag a little bit. Oh no, 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 no. Right. See these two windows here? Right? There's the garages. So if you go in this garage, these two windows are going looking into that garage, yeah? And then you got the front door and you've got oh, and tablets. Front door and then you've got this big window here or windows there. I think that's the dining room. And then this window here, because she said Sebastian's bedroom was downstairs. Right? But where am I now? Right? Get the hell up there. Get up there. You seriously do my idea. So there's the front door. That's Sebastian's window because his bedroom was on the ground floor. That is like the living room. Yeah. Oh. See, it's not a really good picture. I can't get any better. See what I mean? There's a window there. I'd say that's the dining room. Come on, and let's see if I can get in any closer. Yeah, there's his bedroom window, and I'd say that is like the dining room. But I know this is a what a year or so old, right? But let's see, and I've seen updated photos of outside their house. And the bushes are the same size. The bushes have been kept down small, cut down small. They don't grow big. They've been kept nice and tidy. So if he was to climb out of his window, he's got that little bush there. And some little bushes. They made out they had some big bushes out there. Now, I've seen the updated photos. They're no bigger. They might be a little bit bigger, but not much bigger. Not where he's going to be treading in them. On them, I mean. But that's his room, because they said his bedroom is at the front. All right, now let's see if I can... I can't get round the back. All right, let's have a look. Let's just go up here a minute. All right, let's see if I can see anything this way. See? So what, how life said it, is that the garage is there, right? This bit here is Sebastian's room downstairs. Their room is there. And the third bedroom is up in the loft area. Right? No, I don't know if they mean above. Because I heard that they said the third bedroom was above the garage. And there is windows in that roof. Right? Now, here, of the house, this part of the house, is the dining room. Right? Here, you've got the kitchen, and then, I believe, that's where the back door is around there, so you've got, like, the lounge there. Right, I don't know if they've got a hallway or yeah, because I know you've got to go from their bedroom, which is on the back of the house, you've got to go past the kitchen door to get to Sebastian's 
lông tức khâu chỗ về để khí chín chỗ dây thẳng chỗ lại thẳng ngay chỗ chín chín ngay thẳng rồi you walk past the opening to the kitchen to get Sebastian's room right so the kitchen has got to be round here all here and you got the living room here the lounge So I don't know if the dining room, and then you've got the sun room as well. Yeah? So I don't know if the dining room's at the front or on the side. I think it's at the front, because through the doorways you can see the kitchen. You can actually see through one of the doorways, the kitchen area. So please tell me when she said the sofa is very close to Sebastian's bedroom. If she was sitting here in the lounge area, right? The dogs are kept in the sun house when they go to bed, the sun room. Here. Sort of thing here. She's sitting in here. Sebastian is in his bedroom up here, down here. Would you really hear a thud? I don't know. Possible. Possible. I thought. What are you laughing at? My accent? My Birmingham accent? Um, I'm just, it's just little things you now that are getting to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really need to get a, di I'm like a uh, plan, a, a floor plan of their house. Right? But I can't get one. If anyone in the US can get me the floor plan, I'll be really grateful. Right, so. So far, we still haven't found Sebastian. I was a bit annoyed with what I heard last night when someone was putting on a Facebook group that he had been found. That really annoyed me because it came out to be fake. It was a ru rumour. Now, before anyone posts anything like that on Facebook, I wish they would get the facts straight first. Plus, we're not going to know first. They're going to tell the parents and they're going to tell the father. They won't let no one know that. Why is it none of my business? I just want to know where the living room, the lounge, is compared to where Sebastian's bedroom is. Of course, there's a video out there of the inside of the house. An actual video. When it was put up for sale before they put I see, I believe. Right? When those they have you know when you put the houses up for sale, they do a video of the house. So people can watch the video and see what it looks like and whatever online. There's there's that going around, but I can't get that and I'm not really bothered. I just wanted your floor plan to try and figure out where the lounge was to the bedroom. That was the I'm just nosy for when I get something in my head that isn't just doesn't seem to ring right. I just I'm like that phone with the dog. Dog, I'm not gonna let go because some isn't it isn't. What's my favourite saying? It's a bit icky. 
icky. That's a saying in England, icky, especially in Birmingham. It's a bit icky. Uh, some people say that's a bit iffy. As we say icky. Thank you, MJ, anyway, for that. Because today, I'm not joking. I punched it, I punched in something and I was coming up with the the price how much they paid for the house. And you know what else they got online? Her phone numbers. I'm thinking, what? They've got all her phone numbers out there. I thought, no, that's bad because I know when I went on to check about Chris, something about Chris, it hit it gave the landline number, but it hit the mobile numbers. I'm gonna put fair juice, you know what I mean? I don't really care about the numbers, I'm just on the floor play. Right? But on the mother, Katie, it gave out the mobile numbers as well. So I hope you got these mobile numbers that are on this site are old numbers. Because otherwise she could have loads of people just going her up or messaging her, texting her. But no, I was coming up with all this information to Janet, but I don't want that. Don't want that. So what else was there? Oh, there was something else. I knew there was something else. What was this? What is this? Let me know. That's it. That's what I was looking for. Yes. Right. Now, right. properly investigate is my log piles of the size and circumstances. Right. There's like log piles that she said can people and permission to dig away at the pile deep onto all sides. If he crawled in and touched a rotten log or moved the wrong way, decaying tree logs could have collapsed on in, in on him, causing the original opening to fully close and cut off scent trail entirely. Please, please, please. I've seen many animals get flattened inside these large debris, debris piles in the past for the same reasons. Raccoons that explore and go into them. This could happen in an instant if he crawled in that night and no one, not even a dog, would know. Unless, you know, unless performing a dig at minimum of 10 or more feet into it all the way around. I'm telling you, it's highly worth getting a group. But I'm going to share it. But I'm having trouble seeing this myself, so and I can't. Unless I save it to my laptop and I, I can't. No, no. Right. I'll, what I'll do, I'll post it on my Facebook page. So if you want to see it and read it properly, you can. Right? I'm telling you, it's highly worth getting a group of professionals together to do this with dogs on site as it happens, as it's happening. I reported to police of odd activity near this pile three days ago. 37 buzzards were circling over that over the pole that we followed. However, then dispersed due to a deer close by. Being freshly hit later that day. This is a large, huge, huge indicator that something of a large decay or Light decay would be in that general area that was accessible to the vultures. After some time, they smiled. They smiled but couldn't find. I'm begging someone to please see this and please take it serious. 
I live seven minutes from this home and I have and I have went many times to this location and saw multiple signs of this possibility. I worked in new construction years ago and I have a serious bad feeling he's trapped inside and I simply haven't thought to dig into it based on outward appearances, appearance chances that can happen overnight. Please contact me, right? Thank you for finding me that, MG. Right? Because that's what I saw, and I meant to save it. I meant to save that. So apparently the sister, someone said they're going to pass it on to the sister who will pass the information on to Seth. Because he's the only one who can get them to do anything if there's an, a tip has come in. All right, some people, she could phone that tip in herself. But would they take her would they take her or him seriously? Probably not. But if it comes from the father who says, Look, I don't care, search it. He could have climbed in there. I want it searched. They've got to do it. It's a, you know what I mean? They can't say, oh, well, I'm not searching it, because then the father can say, well, you're not doing your job then. You're not doing your job that you're supposed to be doing. You're not looking for my son. If you're not prepared to get the professional people out here and search those logs, then you're not searching for my son. Simple as. So, what else? Uh, uh, what else was there? Was there anything else? No, 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 no. So really, basically, we're back at the beginning. Right? You've got no further. Even with all the searches that Steph has been doing on his own, well, with his two colleagues, colleagues, <clears throat> We've got no further. We don't know nothing else. People are finding bones, but they're dear bones. As they said, if it's a bone, then it's not Sebastian. And to be honest with you, I would not phone the TBI for a bone. I really wouldn't. If I found clothing or I found items of clothing that matched or was similar to what was said that Sebastian was wearing, then yes, I'd phone TBI then. But not if it was a bone. Maybe in, I don't know, how long does it take for a body to take some while? It can take a while depending on the weather as well. Depends on the weather, whether it's hot, wet, and cold. You know what I mean? How fast something will decay. So, what else was there on here? Uh, in this group, I don't know what group she's on about, but this group, JLR, is part of the group. You know what I mean? So I don't know what group she's on about. We, yeah. I would not have... No, I'm not listening to that again because his voice just goes through me. No, this is getting... No. Oh, there has been some... No. Look, look at that photo. Look how happy he is there. 
You know what I mean? What could this lad have done? He's all smiling in all the photos you see. He's all smiling. See this? One. No. Yeah. It did look like teeth marks when... Look at, look at his teeth. Fine. But this is like eight days after Sebastian went missing. That would have healed up. Right. So it may be the dog. Right, maybe the dogs. I don't know, I will not say. I don't, I don't understand what could have happened to me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, he said, Good night, Mom. I love you. Or, um, I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out the door. In today's video, we take a look at Sebastian Rogers' stepfather and mother's first statements of what happened the morning of February 26, 2024. And mother's first statements of what happened the morning of February and mother's back. In today's video, we take a look at Sebastian Rogers' stepfather and mother's first statements of what happened. Sebastian Rogers' stepfather and mother's first I swear to that, I'm gonna get fucked. In today's video, we take a look What's at Sebastian smoke? Rogers. That's Stepfather and mother's first statements of what happened the morning of February 26, 2024. What is that smile called when you're smiling? When you shouldn't be smiling, but you are. Is it jeepers? Or something like that? Oh, God. That was a little mm, smile. Mm. You're doing good there, girl. Mm, keep it up. I'm sure it's called Jupiter's smell or something like that. Um, I'd just like to say hello to everyone again from Xing here and YouTube. So. But hold on, um, yeah, because people are now saying that's what I need to say. Uh, you know, they said they, the neighbor across from them caught them, caught Sebastian going out with the rubbish or something about between six and seven ish. Or something like that. Well, a certain YouTuber looked at the time, right? And I mean, looked at like when sunset, when it started, to, the sun starts to go down, and what time it starts to get dark, right? Now it showed on that day, it started to get dark at five. 35 or 540 right now if he went out between six and seven to put the bins out it'll be pretty dark by then the mother has said the door window cannot pick people up when it's dark outside don't forget they had no security lights up turn time I had no security like turn time. 
So the door, ring doorbell from across the road is not going to pick Sebastian up going to the bins. So had they got when had they got a video of Sebastian putting the bins out? I don't know. It's a bit dubious now when you think of the time and what the mother said about the ring doorbell not picking up anything once it's dark out there because there's not enough light. So that's something else to think about. So, but people are saying the police need to at least clear some of these some of these rumours up. The police don't need to do anything. Sorry, the police don't need to do anything. They they they've got an investigation going. They've got a search going with extra search and everything. They've got their own plan at the moment going. So. They don't need to say anything. They can let the YouTubers ramble on about whether they whether there is a door wing bow video of them coming out, taking the rubbish out. But then if there was, or if he did take the rubbish out, yeah, why did the dogs not pick up why did none of the dogs pick his pick his scent up? And that is coming from the police. An investigative reporter said she got confirmed by the police that none of the dogs picked up any scent around the house or, or going away from the house. So if he was going down to the bin, take the bins down, would his scent not be leading down that driveway? It would. So why didn't they pick his scent up? But it said the dogs, once it got into the garage, once they left that garage, the dogs lost the scent. There was no scent outside of that garage area. So, I'd like to know who put that out about the ring doorbell video across the road, seeing him put the rubbish out. Oh, I know who it was who put it out about, well, I don't know who it was. I know the father said in that first interview that there was a dog that picked up a scent, but then they found out it was a false scent. Right, the father said it in the first interview he, he did with Nick, Nick Berry. Right, and I think everyone just lacked going to that and thought, Wow, you can't, how would you get a false positive? I don't understand that myself. Right, so, and that was the dog that led to the retention pond in. Well, no, it wasn't. Apparently, that dog lost the scent once it got up to the construction site. So, I don't know what dogs are on about got the scent and followed to the retention pond. I don't know who's put that out there. So, anyway, I'm going to leave you to know. Just think about that. Think about where the living room is to the bedroom. Right? Because I know from the lounge, from the video you see of the inside of the house, you've got the lounge because you've got them big doors there. Right? All right. From the video of the house, and this photo was taken from that video of the house. Right, you got those two big doors there where the lounge is. From the lounge, you can see into the kitchen. Right? And from the kitchen, I believe you can see into the maybe at an angle or something. It's a dining room. 
and from the kitchen there's an entrance into a passage like a hallway and their bedroom is up this end of the house here and Sebastian's is at the front here so I don't know. I don't think I've got fairly good hearing. I can hear my grandson, but I'm not that far away from the bedroom when he's here. I'm not that far away. I can literally be off this setting in that living room within 10 seconds, in that bedroom within 10 seconds, if less, if I heard a thug. Because then I know it's fell out the bunk bed. But I'd like to know how he does that when there's a big side on. But he's, he has been known to fall out of my bed. Which is quite high. But I would hear him if he fell out of any of them beds. In fact, I hear when he's getting off the bunk bed and coming into me, into my bedroom. So it's not quiet when he moves about, it's quite loud. But we'll see. Like I said, if I knew the floor plan of the house, it'd be a great help. Anyway, I'm going to leave you all because it's um, nearly 10.30 here in the UK. So I'm going to leave you all. Say good night. And thank you for being here. Please hit the like, subscribe, hit the bell, and share. Get his picture. Keep sharing his picture, his name, on your Facebook account, on your Twitter account, on your Instagram account, on your TikTok account. Share. Keep his name and picture out there. That's all we ask. Do let's not. We don't want this to be any other summer wells or any other child that's been missing for years. We don't want it to go that way. And we've got to keep the pressure up so it keeps the pressure on the police then. When the pressure stops. When people stop talking about Sebastian online, then the police will think, oh God, we're free. We don't have to keep doing all this now. We can, you know what I mean? They won't be so bothered about it. But if we keep talking about it, about the facts of the case, not what people have said, right? We can talk about the interviews. That's fine. We can keep talking about them. But I'd rather concentrate on the facts of the case. And that is what the police, the information the police have given us. Which isn't a lot. But those are the facts. That he went missing on the 20th, he was reported missing on the 26th, about 20 past 6 in the morning. Uh... They've got no dogs have hit on him on his scent. They've had no sightings of him. Nothing to say he's not he's on alive. He's right. But nothing to say he is alive. If you know what I mean. So you just gotta stay to the facts. And don't let Other people get into your head. Okay? And yes, I know there's YouTubers going around the streets and whatever, where they live. Right? And it's just so funny, they left the day after the YouTubers all got down there. After the YouTubers started turning up, apart from JLR, who's been down there, and he's been working with the father. He's been going 
and said to his bigger father, up until the Friday, last Friday, right, it was just Steph, a colleague from his work, and someone else in him, another young lad, going out every day, searching, getting the word out there, putting his picture out there. And then on the Friday, JLR did that live. Did that, was it alive? Yes, it was alive. And spoke to the father and to the other two guys who was with him and actually walked around filming, showing people what that what Seth and, and the other two guys are doing. That then on the Saturday, was it Friday? No, he did the interview on the Thursday, I believe it was. Because then it was on the, yeah, he did this interview on the Wednesday or Thursday. Then on the Friday, they had all these people turning up and searching. And they were searching, right? And then on Saturday, they all turned up again. United Cajun Navy turned up, right? But then because there was a hit on a body, but it was bones. But it's still be nice to find out who it was for the family of that missing person. But them are the facts. Don't be swayed from the facts. All these different stories that are coming out just proves to me they are lying. Because if you're telling the truth, you don't need to change your story. So once again, please, hit that like, hit the bell, subscribe, like and share. Thank you. See you all soon. Bye.